welcome to my legal blog. As you can see today, we have a change in venue. I am making changes in my life, and one of those changes is I'm gonna walk. And uh, while I walk, I want you all to walk with me. Keeps me uh, focused on the task at hand, you know? Well, today's blog is defamation. Defamation is a uh, strange topic. I discussed it in my last video briefly. Uh, mentioned it more. And defamation is the concern that someone has made a statement of fact. And those facts are false. It's, uh, you can't have defamation unless someone is making a, sta a, fa a statement of fact and that fact is false. There's also a little bit of uh, wriggle room in there for, uh, hy for hyperbole and uh, political discourse. And I'll get to that in a moment, but uh, uh, I can't make a full description of this right now. It's not the topic of the video, but I'm going to make a brief primer on the concept of free speech for those of you in countries whose free speech is not enshrined in law. Um, here in America, uh, and in fact for those of you in America who don't understand it either, here in America, we have something called freedom of speech. It is enshrined in the First Amendment to the Constitution. Uh, the government, the courts, have repeatedly decided that speech should be interpreted very broadly. Uh, so this involves all types of symbolic speech, including, much to our dismay, uh, spend money, the spending of money on political campaigns. Um, again, I'll get into free speech issues on other, in other videos. I'm not going to get into that right now. But uh, defamation. Well, let me keep, first keep on keep on topic, James. All right. So, the topic of uh, free speech always leads to a discussion on the restrictions of free speech. Um, free speech being that you, the government cannot create a law which restricts the speech of its citizens. Um, however, there have been narrow exemptions that have come about um, to free speech. Generally, uh, they fall under a few uh, categories, and I'll, I'll cover them each individually. Maybe I'll do a series on freedom of speech. It's a huge topic. Um, but the narrow exemption we're covering today is the ex exemption on false statements of fact. Um, um, the reason this is important is it's the idea that we all have... We all have uh, the right to say what we want. Um, my core legal principle... Why do we have laws? Uh, this is my co my personal core legal principle. Uh, this is not a universal one. I think it should be, but uh, to to properly understand why we have law, uh, why we have exemptions to freedom of speech, you need to understand the core tenet of uh, law, which is that law needs to intervene when one's per when one person's right to self-determinate interferes with another person's right to self-determinate. 
Meaning, once you interfere in someone's ability to um, choose their own path, that is someplace where the law needs to be concerned. Um, and in this case, uh, the law has determined that significant harm, both uh, personal and economic, um, uh, well, personal can be economic, I should say personal and uh, to the greater economic uh, world, your, uh, there is speech that can have negative impacts. And while in general, the freedom of speech is designed to say uh, that we have to protect that speech because even though we disagree with it, uh, everyone, um, we can't restrict speech just because we disagree with it. Um, so while that is actually a thing, um, false statements of fact, telling untruths, lying is considered to be uh, to have significant benefit or significant damage with no benefit um, societally. So uh, because of that, we have an exception. Now you have to understand the wide variety of things that are not defamation. Primarily among them, statements of opinion. Uh, statements of opinion are not defamation. Uh, they are the personal belief espoused by one person to another, and therefore, you, the government, will not step in. Please note that there is no such thing as hate speech. And again, I'll cover this kind of concept in another video. But, uh, that is not actually an exception. Um, your opinions, uh, as horrible and despicable and wrong as they may be, uh, are never considered defamatory. Um, so, Oh, that hurts a lot of defamation cases, especially those with politicians. Um, politicians like to claim defamation a lot whenever something un... Uh, any, anything they don't want people to hear gets out. But uh, that's not actually defamation. And it's very important to understand the difference between opinion and fact. Now... Uh, on the flip side of this, uh, since defamation is the false statement of fact, specifically about another person, um, the converse is that true statements of fact are never defamatory. Um, this came big in a McDonald's case in the UK in the, uh, oh, I don't know. I think it was 70s. Um, read about it years ago. Uh, basically, the concept is a bunch of anti corporatists uh, released a flyer telling about all the bad things about McDonald's and why we shouldn't have McDonald's. They shouldn't have McDonald's. Um, so, McDonald's sued for defamation on the basis that uh, these statements were false. What they didn't, I guess, realize, or I guess they never realized that uh, the guys distributing them would actually uh, fight legally. Because as it turns out, somewhere between 50 and 80% of the claims made in the brochure were actually true. And uh, they were able to prove those claims in court. Now, they still had a few uh, claims they got hit on because those were actually defamatory. But most of the claims were ruled as to be 
true statements of fact, and therefore, as a true statement of fact, not defamatory. Um, the truth is the ultimate defense against a defamation claim. Um, now, these two taught, so these two express the fact that most of the defamation claims out there made by people, made by politicians and companies uh, aren't in fact defamation. Uh, they're generally used to censor the speech that they don't want people to hear. Um, and any public figure will do this. Uh, uh, but that actually brings me to the exceptions for hyperbole. Um, these come in two forms. One is the, the, the idea that in political discourse, you're going to stretch and bob the truth a bit. And that's kind of, a under, that's kind of expected. Uh, if you are a public figure, you are someone in the public's eye, you are someone that is newsworthy, um, you're someone that... Uh, Oh, what is it? Ah, I can't remember. So, some celebrity gossip. Uh, TMZ, that's it. Celebrity, uh, TMZ. If you're someone TMZ follows, you're a public figure. And uh, the idea is, is that when you're a public figure, you need to have thick skin. I call it the thick skin doctrine. And that is the idea that... Um, you are going to get more commentary uh, posed against you than the normal person. And so we will look at your claims of defamation very strictly. Uh, this is important because you're going to get... Oh, tell me a public figure in the last 20 years that hasn't had something bad said about her. Or him. I say her because I'm thinking of Mother Teresa, who recently had an article that exposed the, her diaries and suggested that uh, she didn't want to be who she was, and she was basically just living it. Um, and we all talked about how selfless she was and how great she was, and as it turns out, she uh, she uh, she wasn't very selfless. She just kind of did it. Um, maybe that makes her more selfless. She didn't enjoy what she was doing. So maybe that, maybe she's even greater. Fuck! Ah, she's actually a saint. What do you know? Um, um, but, uh, yeah. It's a, uh, you, that, that, it's this idea, you know, now that I'm a YouTuber, I have to expect that someone's going to come down in the comments and say, Stop breathing so heavily, you fat... Whatever. And, uh... That's a true statement of fact. I, honestly, I mean, this, uh, the, the fact that I'm breathing heavily is true, and that statement about who I am, well, that's both opinion and fact. Uh... So the state, so, and I have to kind of deal with this. Um, now, were someone to say that uh, I committed a crime, uh, we'd actually, you'd have to go beyond the concept of whether it's opinion and go to the question of whether anyone would reasonably believe that to be a true statement. Um, this is the other side, the coin of hyperbole. Um, the idea that you might not actually, uh, what you're doing might not be seen as, um, not what you're doing, that, uh, that some people might say things and people are just going to pass that off as, oh, you don't like the guy, huh? And they'll just kind of take it as kind of the rant. Um, and so there's there's this concept 
of uh, thick needing to have a thick skin uh, against commentary. Um, and so, in general, um, for you and me, that doesn't matter. Uh, in general, in general, if uh, someone makes a statement of fact against you, you can get a uh, you can sue them for defamation. Uh, there's also the to consider, and I'm not going to get into this because I'm not familiar strictly with how. Uh, how awards go for uh, these types of cases, but uh, if you get a, uh, you can't act. Uh, you're not going to want to sue over some forms of defamation. Why? Because it's hard to quantify the harm done by the speech. Um, there may be some statutory damages I don't know about. Um, very well could be. Um, uh, whether you can get attorney's fees back, I don't know. You probably do get statutory damages, though. Um, but still, you have to, pr to show harm being caused. And that can be a tricky one, especially... Uh, Especially when a relationship breaks down, say. Uh, harm can be ongoing, uh, but not uh, not e readily displayable. Um, a lot of these statements can be made where no one else can hear them, uh, or you can't prove that they're making them outside of uh, your ear, out of earshot. You're just getting third, second and third hand notices back. And that's also really hard to prove. Um, it's why you generally only see big uh, people doing it. Um, I hope this is uh, given some insight into the concept of defamation. Um, how... While it is a restriction on speech, it's a very limited one. Um, and uh, that's what we want. We want limited restrictions on speech. So, uh, again, comment below. Let me know what, the, uh, what topics you guys want me to cover. I'm starting to grow a list. And uh, I will see you next time.